some comments on my last video. I don't know what this is. What? What the hell is that? What do you mean by we get vehicles? Can you give me a description? Ability still in that side. Hmm. Hmm. That's a tough one. Reliability stealth in this. Challenge accepted. Roll it and try. Click on zombie apocalypse. <laughs>going on guys I'm back this time with a subscriber request and we are doing top five wig out vehicles and I don't know what a wig out vehicle is I still don't know what a wig out vehicle is but I do know five vehicles that are reliable and stealthy so let's do those hey eh? number five is a Volvo XC90, specifically 2005 to 2015 Volvo XC90. Why those ones? Well, up till recently, Volvo have been pretty reliable. After 2015, they started getting shit. But, yeah, 2005 to 2015, pretty reliable. And go to any private school in any suburb and count how many Volvo XC90s there are around these private schools, rich private schools. They plague the damn roads around there. Not only that, have a look at how many doctors still drive these models. Count how many times you get cut off by a Volvo XC90 going 100 mile an hour past you. And then count how many times you see a Volvo XC90 pulled over by police on the side of the road. And count how many times you see a Volvo XC90 getting pulled into a roadside RBT by police. I haven't seen one. I've never seen one ever. I've never seen one pulled over. But I have seen them stuck on beaches and out onto uh, you know, rough roads and four-wheel drive tracks because people think these can go on the beaches and off-road, which they can't. And another thing, the Volvo XC90 is probably... The most luxurious one on this list. Well, it is. I'll put these, I would put the Volvo XC90 and Volvo in general above both Mercedes and BMW. It comes with better features than both the BMW and the Mercedes and the Volvo is just a ton more reliable. So what do you get? You get like, you know, dual zone climate control, heated front seats, captain's chairs, sunroof, reverse camera, reverse parking sensors, sunroof and some models, you know, stop me if I'm wrong, but you get all this and it's cheap. They throw these away. You can just pick them up for as little as two grand. What are the bad things about it? Well, they're a pain in the ass to service yourself and they do like a service. As you're in pain a car, you will have to get it serviced a lot to keep it reliable as it is. And when things break, they stay broken until you can afford to fix them. And it will cost you a hell of a lot to fix. But the pros really outweigh the cons here. I mean, as long as you keep it serviced, it will keep going. Number four. This has got to be one of the most numerous cars on the bloody road. So there is the fact that I've pretty much have three of these sitting out in front of my house right now, out in my street. And that is, well, I'm going to give you a two-for-one special, two-for-one. And they are the Subaru Forester and the Subaru Outback. Try going a block without seeing at least one of these cars, either a Subaru Outback or Subaru Forester. Try going a block. They are everywhere. 
Uh, absolutely, everybody, you can pick them up for a song as well. Reliability is very, very high with these damn things. You want reliability? Yeah. This is one of the most reliable on this list. Cheap to service. Decently uh, easy enough to service yourself. I've heard it's a pain, but yeah, I don't know. But you know, Take it to any mechanic, he'll do it for you in 10 minutes. Give or take. Yeah, my pick would be the Subaru Outback, because I just like the shape of them better. I just like them better. And in the Subaru Forester has been known to uh, being get by the uh, by the hoon mob and slammed to the ground and the exhaust cut off. So they do get a little bit of attention by police. Yeah, try going out there and seeing how many there are. Try taking a shot every time you see a Subaru Forester or a Subaru Outback. You'll probably be dead by the time you get out of town. Number three. Now these, actually the next two on the list can be swapped and changed, whichever one you fancy. But I'll go put this one in this list, in this spot. Because, yeah, I'm a bit more of a fan of the other one. But anyway, number three is a Nissan X-Trail. It's slightly more expensive. These two are slightly more expensive than the rest of the list but that's because well yeah they, they they're very popular aren't they again try going a couple of blocks and not see one of these they're also very very reliable yeah, I've seen these rack up 300,000 K's without a problem servicing is pretty cheap parts readily available they use very little fuel for what they are they're extremely practical, and you see one, you see them all. Number two on the list. Toyota RAV4. It's the Nissan X-Trail's direct competitor. And again, try going a block and not seeing a RAV4. Try going 100 metres. Try going in any parking lot. Try going into any parking lot in any shopping centre and not see a Toyota RAV4. It's impossible. You'll probably see five or six lined up next to each other. The servicing costs are probably the cheapest on the list. I believe it has better off-road ability than the Nissan X-Trail. The Nissan X-Trail has uh, a problem with it going in the front wheel drive when it gets too hard. I don't believe the uh, RAV4 has any type of troubles with that. And it comes with a centre diff lock, although it's so does the X-Trail, but X-Trail goes back to front-wheel drive. They don't really have any major issues, as long as you keep it service. I have I have known people that have killed them, but that's because they didn't service them. And it's got great fuel economy as well, but uh, there's no real drawbacks to having a RAV4. Number one. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, number one. There's a Toyota. Camry. Now let's be honest, when has, when have you ever seen a Toyota Camry pulled up by police or pulled into a roadside RBT? They seem to have some sort of cloak about them. It means they can do whatever the hell they want and get away with it. Now I'm only talking about the one, the only camera you should be looking at getting is the four-cylinder model. The V6s, no, don't, don't bother with the V6s. V6 front-wheel drives just don't make any sense. And the four-cylinders, almost no servicing costs. The servicing costs are extremely cheap. The reliability of the four-cylinders is unmatched. I haven't really heard of a, anything major happening to a four-cylinder. Fuel economy is stupid. You know, I, me and a friend got almost a thousand Ks out of a tank of fuel in a four-cylinder Camry once. We were on a road trip, and we weren't hanging around either. We were being silly. We almost got a thousand Ks out of it. We, I think we did like 900 and something Ks to a tank. So the fuel economy out of a Toyota Camry, four-cylinder Toyota Camry, is phenomenal. Practicality off the scale. Clockability off the scale. Anyway, guys, that's going to do it for me. If you think of any other challenges you want me to try, any other lists that you want me to try, 
put them down in the comment section down below. That's for me. I'm out of here. Yep. Peace.